listen, we're on the line right now with Miss Coyley Ray. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good, turning up, going crazy out here. Absolutely. Other than the red eye flight, like I completely understand. And it's coming from LA too. Every time I like travel from LA to a different state, whether if it's three, yeah, three hours ahead, Jersey, anywhere, I feel like this is bad. Yeah, because it, it's, it's kind of like jet lag, right? A little bit from LA when you come to Atlanta, three hours. It's jet lag and it's like, yeah, the time difference. Yeah, we're well, all good. Well, listen, it's this weekend, NBA All-Star. You got to get some coffee because we are going to turn up and have That's a good time. That's why I'm resting. That's why I'm resting because <laughs> I know I got, a, I got four bookings, so. Okay. It's oh, easy. four. Okay, so where, where will you be this weekend? Uh, Republic, Odyssey, Traffic, and Oak. Okay, nice, nice. All right, I'm gonna definitely have to pull up on you. So let's go ahead and get into this interview. Everybody definitely have Coily Ray on the line with me, pretty girl. Um, tell everybody first of all who you are and how did you start in the music business for people who don't know you. I know you already have like over two million people, but as far as like some people who are just now listening to the radio who don't know who Coily Ray is. Um, I started doing music probably when I was like 18, 19 for a for real. I got old music on YouTube back in the day, but I wouldn't really consider that like when I started. I started amongst myself when I was living on my own. Mm. And um around eight, when A Boogie had dropped, he was like he had dropped what was it, artist who it was Don't Trust Bitches and 99 Messages and the EP around all that stuff. So he was the only guy that I felt like was talking crazy about the girls, but speaking facts. So I wanted to talk crazy about the girls and put it in music, but speak uh, facts. So I had dropped goofy ass niggas and then it went viral in Jersey. And from there it was like, nice. So did you, did you really think like when you, when you came up, right. When you first started doing music, did you really think that everything that you were doing would blow up? Like, you know, how some people come in and they have dreams of becoming this huge artist and, you know, just just being that person or that chick. Did you have dreams of doing that or becoming that particular artist? Yeah, I always knew I was a star, and I knew I always was gonna be a star. I just didn't know how like fast everything would come and everything kind of happened really fast. Okay, now real talk. I did not know that Benzino was your father. I did not know that. So oh, no. Yeah, so, and I'm just like, and, and I see the resemblance, resemblance, so I'm like, okay, she looked exactly like a father. So, did that play a big part in your coming into the industry? No, but, you know, I would say it's in my blood, so I play the part, I guess. Nice, nice. So, okay, so definitely, let's talk about this brand new single, where it's brand new to us, but let's talk about No More Parties. So how how did you come up with, with this record right here? And and I said, okay, when I first heard the record, I say, she sounds a little, who is that Dave Lopez? It's like, no, Jazzy, you tripping. This is like this. Is I sound crazy. nothing like Dave Lopez. <laughs> like people, you want to know what makes it like crazy is this they're gonna compare me to Deja Loaf because there's no other female with this type of aesthetic to compare mm. me to. Everybody just needs something to talk about. So it's like, Oh, she sound like Deja Lope. But if you really pull Deja Lope's song up, we sound nothing alike. She's never, ever, ever, ever going to be able to sound like me. And I'll never be able to sound like her because I'm from Jersey and she's from, what, Detroit? Detroit. So it's just total two different sounds already. Does that irritate you a little bit when they keep making those comparisons about you being It does. It, it does. Because, you know, it makes people really feel like, you know, like that shit got to her head, like for real, for real. Like I like Deja Loaf a lot. I'm a, I'm a fan, mm -hmm. but everybody trying to say that I stole her sound, that got to her head, and and it kind of like, you know, started ha it's a little shade was thrown from it. And mm -hmm. I don't ever come from a bad place, you know. So I just don't. It's like it just reminds me, like don't fucking remind me, like ugh. Okay. Like no, I sound like me. Like Poyla Ray sounds like Poyla Ray. Deja Lo sound like Deja Lo, I'm telling you. Gotcha. So that's strictly for those who keep trying to make those comparisons. We're not comparing you to Deja Lo. Coily Ray is Coily Ray. And y'all, but that, I, that was just, you know, coming from an honest opinion. I was like, okay, but you are so dope. But I know you can go from like the tomboy and then you can go to like sexy video vixen in like minutes. So 
How would you necessarily describe your style or should we describe it in a particular way? So like everything cozy for real, for real. You know, I'm very happy with my body and, yes. and my skin and the way I am. I feel like God made me perfect mm-hmm. and I accept it. Um, so for real, for real, that's really it. I like everything about me. So when I wear my little baggy clothes, because I'm trying to, you know, when I wear my little ass, ass cause you trying to, you know. <laughs> Either way, I'm trying to, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, right. it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that. But as far as being in the industry, I know you're, like I said, you're just coming into the industry. There are a lot of pressures, especially on women, to have this perfect body. Like, everybody has kind of, like, have the perfect shape, the perfect stomach, the perfect boobs, the perfect. But um, are any of your label mates or managers or, or people around you necessarily putting the pressure on you to look like the other artists in the industry? Mm-mm. It's the opposite. They always tell me to stay the same. I hope you don't get nothing done, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy because I have motherfucking hit me like, are you 18? And I just thought to myself, like, I'm about to be 24 in May, but it's just crazy. Like, I feel like I look my age. I don't know. I'm a little childish too, but at the same time, I feel like I look 24. It just seems like everybody, you know, has a whole different does that bother Mindset you? Of what 24 <laughs> looks like. No, well, it doesn't. I feel good. I feel like I'm young. Like I I I look my age. You know, it's some people that's my age that I look like 30. <laughs> <laughs> what bothers you the most when you're on social media? I know you have a lot of fans, you know, following you. So what what bothers you the most and what irritates you the most about the fan interaction? Um mm. Mm, just seeing the negative stuff because the negative stuff doesn't irritate me for real because I know like it's gonna happen regardless whether if I wasn't Koi Ray, the known person celebrity girl whatever you want to call it the artist or if I was just Koi Collins I feel like I'm always gonna have haters but seeing them and being the pu- being in the public eye is a little risky because you know so sometimes I'll be wanting to hit these people and be like, where you at? But <laughs> pull up. <laughs> yeah, for real. Because they get real reckless and it sucks. But at the end of the day, it's like I kind of got used to it. Yeah, but how I get you- more love than hate. Exactly. I was I was going to say that, you know, a lot of times, you know, I would see on celebrity pages and they get so much love and then they see just that one negative um comment and then they choose to comment on that. I know how irritated it could be, you know, but like how, how do how do you filter that out like do you block everybody who makes the negative comments I block you? yeah I'll block you I'll block you without you even knowing that I blocked you or I'll just act like I see it and let my fans do it my fans go crazy my fans are like my a really good support system so they don't let no no bs come my way for real. especially the fans the fans definitely go hard for you Ex- especially when you put out the tweet in your Instagram post about, you know, your father, um, Benzino. So we definitely got to talk about that. What, what really fueled that? Because I know at times, like I've, I've beefed with my father before and we didn't talk for a while, you know, but I know at the end of the day, it's all love. So what actually fueled that beef with your father and what made you go to social media instead of like picking up the phone and like, and calling him? I kind of had a blackout moment and I didn't have, I didn't call him because he didn't call me and mm-hmm. I took it to social media because he took it to social media mm-hmm. and I I just felt like, you know, the song was already out. How the fuck do you wait till I'm on billboard number three and everything that happened for you to feel some type of way? Like me saying that, you know, I want to say F that man, but it won't make me better. He let me down, but I promise I won't let him. It's just like, it can mean so many different things and, it, and, and it's, it's, you know, but only a guilty mother freaker would get online and try to paint this whole perception and try to make him look like a victim. And overall, when in, I didn't even say you're a piece of shit, dad, or you're this or you're that. So I kind of really needed to clear my name because he came in given like, oh, Koi had this, Koi had that or whatever. Right. And just more of the story not even understanding the point still till this day like it's still about money it's still about what we did and what I've done and 
like, man, listen, everybody needs to understand. Like, my, my me and my brother would just talk about this shit. He said he took care of my brothers. My brother Monty, he said, yo, we was all in that fancy shit and out of it. I was 12. So if I was 12, mm-hmm. my brother was like, if I was 12, you were six. So mm-hmm. imagine, I don't even know what the fuck that shit feels like. Any mm-hmm. of that lifestyle that he, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't even old enough to understand it. So the fact that you were so caught up on that and not really caught up on making sure like your daughter and you have a real solid mm. foundation and a real daughter relationship and you the first thing you do is took it to like social media i blacked out i did and i let my anger get the best of me the devil won that day but <laughs> i won't let him i won't i won't let that motherfucker get me again i get you i get you so but be, before then before he took it to social media because I, I just just trying to understand i guess everybody's trying to understand before social media had you guys even sat down and had a conversation or did you guys have a real relationship you did not. No. Okay. We always we've been battling with with our relationship my whole life. Like I said, I'll be 24 in May. So oh, no. we ain't never really have a real. I'm the only girl. I got all brothers. And I don't know. We ain't never really have. But I'm, I don't hold grudges. Like I've always been the type of person like as you can hear in my song, like I want to say F him, but it won't make me better. Like at the end of the day, I can't wait for the day that he does realize, you know, like just realize and it's going to be able to motivate and set the tone for so many other people. He don't have to worry about like pride and ego and looking like he's the only fucking guy that, you know, went through father and daughter relationships. I feel like we're going to get past it. You know, it's going to take time. But other than that, ain't nobody going to come online and try, you know, try to say I'm this or jeopardize my character or try to say like I cap in my rap. Like ain't no cap in my rap at all. Like period. So. Period. So do you think you're, and I know you said it before, but do you think that you will speak to your father soon? And will you be the first person to pick up the phone? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He told me I, I can, I don't know. I don't know. Well, hurt people hurt people. So you know, like I said, I, I I beefed with my father before and it's just like we thank God nothing happened within that particular year where, you know, one of us passed away and, you know, we we, we live with those regrets. So hopefully that you guys, hopefully y'all can mend the relationship. I agree. So will you pick up the phone first? Yeah, I'll pick up the phone. Good. I'll okay. pick up the call for anybody. I don't hope we're just love it, but at love the it. same time, like. Ugh. You better come correct on that phone call, <laughs> man. You might not pick up the next one. Coily Ray is a definitely a rebel, and I love it. You are a Taurus, right? Yeah, I'm a Taurus. Bullheaded. So it's all good. I understand it. You're still a good person. So definitely I'm um, loving this No More Parties. We have it on Streets 94.5, running it back all day, every day. I love it. What is next for you? Um, right now we just really going crazy. About to drop the video with Dirk to no more parties with a uh, real goat. Shout out to Rico. Mm-hmm. And then we gonna drop big prr with Poo Shiesty going prr. viral on TikTok right now. Yes, sir. Nice, nice. Okay, bet. Um, K Camp remix the no more parties, right? Is who's who's what's the real remix? Is it the official with Dirk or K Camp? The official with Dirk. The okay, official with Dirk. Okay, nice. So. Outside of music, what else do you plan to do? How do you see Coily Ray in five years? Well, in five years, I will be the biggest female artist, selling artist, performing artist. And um, I just see my sound continue to just grow and I continue to grow mentally, nice. physically, financially, nice. and um I don't know. I just can't wait to show the world for real, for real what I got in store. I'm a superstar. You know, I ain't here today, going tomorrow. I'm here forever. Okay. Look, you got to speak it into existence. I absolutely love that. Any last words before I let you get back to sleep? Because I know you just caught a red eye to get here. I'm going, I'm from the side <laughs> right into this motherfucker. Hell no, that's it. I appreciate y'all so much. I appreciate you, pretty girl. So you definitely have what's next. And I'm looking forward to so much and blessings. And um, I'm looking for so much from you. Like, I, I Thank you. definitely have that star factor. Thank you, Jazzy. I appreciate you.